Hey guys, it's Kisera and today I'm going to be talking about the best books of 2020. So this is part of my 2020 recap videos. In the last video, we talked about the top 10 worst books that I read in the year of 2020. These are books that didn't necessarily come out in 2020, but books that I read for the first time in 2020. So you can check that one out up there. Also check the description for a list of all of the videos that are going to be in this recap. Unlike last year where I decided to break it up by genre, this year I decided to do my top 10 of each of the different categories for fantasy and for non-fantasy. So this is my non-fantasy video. We're going to talk about the best non-fantasy books that I read this year. Starting out at number 10 is Between the World and Me by ta -Nehisi Coates. So this is actually the only non-fiction that made my end of the year recap, but it is definitely one that I would highly recommend. It is a really short novel, but it's very powerful. So this is a letter from the author to his son writing about what it's like to be a black man in America. And I think ta -Nehisi Coates is just a profound author. This is not the only book by him that I read this year, and I definitely want to read more of his works because I feel like from the very beginning I immediately grow attached to his stories and this is definitely one of those. I listened to the audiobook for this actually. I got the physical copy of it later on because I wanted to have a physical copy of it. Audiobook is really well done also which I would definitely recommend. If you like nonfiction, especially if you like nonfiction that has kind of social and cultural issues, this is definitely one that I wouldn't miss. It is really really well done. It'll definitely open your eyes to many things that you maybe hadn't known before and like Toni Morrison says it should most definitely be required reading. So next I want to talk about The Two Lives of Lydia Bird by Josie Silvers. So this book really caught my eye because while it's a romantic contemporary it also has kind of an speculative element to it. It's following a widow named Lydia whose husband died on her 28th birthday but she's kind of living a double life because she has her real life where she is a widow and her husband is not alive and then she has this second life when she falls asleep. So when she falls asleep she lives gives a continuation of what her life would have been if her husband was alive. So we kind of have her story with her husband while at the same time also having her story without her husband and what happens after that where she also kind of starts getting this romantic interest in someone. I really love those like parallel sort of timeline sort of things but this one is like definitely not sci-fi or anything like that but I really kind of loved seeing those two different potentials of her life what her life could have been if he lived and then what it ended up being as she she kind of moved on from her dying husband even though she can't fully move on from him because she's living this other life in which he's still very much alive. So I really love the double storyline aspect of this and I really like the romance in here. The romance in here really worked for me and the other's writing style just kept me really invested in the story. I really really enjoyed this. Definitely one of my favorites of the year. So the next book I want to talk about is A Network Effect by Martha Wells. This is the first full-length novel but also kind of the fifth book in the Murderbot Diaries. It was much more than I was expecting. And I do absolutely love the Murderbot Diaries. I love the first four novellas so, so much. This series has some of the best AI personalities that I've ever read. This is the first full-length novel, which since the beginning, I have been wanting a full-length novel for this series. So I was super excited and this exceeded all my expectations for it. First of all, it brought back one of my favorite artificial intelligence personalities and just the relationships between artificial intelligence was perfect. I absolutely loved this so much. Absolutely hilarious. Such a great just feel good sci-fi novel. I loved every second of this and I just want more Murderbot in my life. All the Murderbot that you can get. For those of you who don't know, the Murderbot series is following an artificial intelligence that calls itself Murderbot. It basically hijacked its own internal security system so it now has free will. It has emotions and things but it also has a past that it doesn't fully remember so it has kind of like this mysterious past. It's also a security bot so it's pretty good at fighting and things like that and potentially killing people if you couldn't tell from the, the name murder bot. It's hilarious too because it has absolutely no ambition and would prefer to just like binge watch TV shows instead of actually doing its job. Very relatable also. It is a fantastic in artificial intelligence that I absolutely love. I love everything about this series and Network Effect was just such a great addition to the series. So my best books of 2020 would not be complete without at least one book by by Octavia E. Butler. So of course I have to talk about Lilith's Brood by the fabulous Octavia E. Butler. So this 
is a distant future sci-fi, which I know you can't tell from the cover. I absolutely hate this cover. But despite this cover, this series is fantastic. By the way, this is a bind up of the three books in Lilith's Brood. So the three books in it are Dawn, Adulthood Rights, and Imago, and they take place generations apart. So in this distant future sci-fi, humanity has basically made itself extinct, and this race called the Owen Kali decide to give humanity a second chance and basically reboot them. So Dawn is following the first human that's reawakened, whose name is Lilith Yapo, and she is on this alien spacecraft of some sort to teach the other humans that they're going to send down to Earth to basically reboot this human world. And then of course, Adulted Rights, which is following one of Lilith's sons, and then Imago is following another offspring. I'm not gonna say like who or anything like that because it's kind of a spoiler when you find out that mystery. Really, really good, and I really enjoy that aspect of it. This series is one of the most unique and interesting sci-fi series that I've ever read. And I know I've talked about this series and Octavia E. Butler a lot on my channel this year, but that's because she's absolutely phenomenal and this is an absolutely phenomenal series. I loved every second of this. This is actually really hard to read. It is really dark at times, emotionally distressing, and there are definitely trigger warnings for so many things in here. But at the same time, I could not stop. Like it was so good the entire time. I loved every second of this. The world building in here, I think is what really lends to this because the aliens, the Owen Kali, are really interesting. They have like three genders for the record, which is like kind of cool the way that works. I just loved it. I loved every second of this series. Highly, highly recommend, especially if you like hard sci-fi, like hard sci-fi, alien sci-fi, and if you like genetics. This was absolutely fantastic. I think I give the series as a whole like 4.5 stars. Butler is truly a prolific author, and this is definitely one of my favorites that I've read by her so far. So next, I have to talk about The Dark Forest by Six and Lou. This is the second book in the Remembrance of Earth's Past series, and I loved it just so, so much. This series, I don't even know what to say about this book. Like, I honestly don't even know what to say about this book without giving away spoilers for The Three-Body Problem, because it's so, so completely different than The Three-Body Problem, but it's structured in such a similar way, especially in the way, like, mysteries are developed and revealed. I just absolutely love the way this author writes, because he writes these scenes that are really interesting by themselves, and then they have other scenes that seem completely disconnected from the previous scene, but like when you look at the book as a whole, it works really, really well. It's just mind-boggling at times. I went through this whole book going, this is really good, like I'm really enjoying this, and then I got to the end and I was like, oh my gosh, what? just happened. Like, I don't even know how that worked, but it was done so well. Like, it all came together in the best way that, like, makes me really think about, like, space and, like, alien races in other planets and things like that. That is honestly kind of scary in a weird way. Like, the metaphor that the dark forest is specifically talking about is profound in interesting ways, and I really enjoyed this, like, so much. Also, for those of you who don't know, this is a translated work. It was originally written in Chinese. Definitely a must-read for any fans of the sci-fi genre, but definitely read this at a time where you could really use your brain. That's why I haven't continued on with the series yet, because I know I'm gonna absolutely love the last book in this series. Like, I, I just know it's a huge book. I feel like it's gonna make me think a lot, and I'm really excited for it. I also want to read pretty much every book by this author now, because it's just absolutely fantastic. So the next book I want to talk about is Waking Gods by Sylvain Nuval. So this is the second book in the Themis File series, and while I did love Sleeping Giants, the first one also, I absolutely loved Waking Gods so, so much. I did not expect this book when I went into it. This book is literally like action nonstop. I was a little skeptical of it going into it at first because there is a time skip between the first book and the second book, which I usually don't like that, but it kind of picks up where I left off because it kind of fills in those gaps. But at the same time, it's still very much like four years in the future, I think it is. And it is just so action packed. I loved every second of this. I think my only complaint after reading it was that I feel like I didn't get to know the characters that well but at the same time you kind of do get to know the characters well in the way that you would get to know people in real life. You just never get to inside of their heads, which honestly is fine. Like, that's fine. I loved every second of this. It was definitely a big step up from Sleeping Giants, and while the third book was a little bit disappointing for me, it actually made my most disappointing books of the year list, I still absolutely loved Waking Gods, and I still absolutely love the Themis Files in general because of this book and because of the concept of it. I don't even want to go too much into the concept of it, but I just think that the author's writing style lends really well to the type of book this is because this is told in like a mass media format so it's told through like files and stuff so it's not like from any one perspective and the author has this really like action driven sort of style 
that works really, really well for this that I just absolutely love. I usually don't like second books in series, but this one was definitely the best one for the Themis Files, and I highly recommend this series overall. And if you haven't heard of the series, in the first book in this series, people start finding parts of this giant alien robot, and then mysteries and actions and all of that ensues from that, and it was just fantastic. I absolutely love this, and I love sort of the ideas that it makes you think about while you're reading it. It definitely brings up a lot of interesting ideas that is fun to ponder too. So the next one I want to talk about is Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. When I found out Frederick Bachman was releasing a book, I was just like, I absolutely have to read this book right away. And I absolutely did. As soon as it came out, I got the first copy that I can get and I don't regret it one bit. This was absolutely fantastic. Like all of Frederick Bachman's books, it's very character driven and it's following a group of characters who are kind of pulled into this bank robbery and it's told in like an incongruous timeline sort of way. So it starts off with the police officers, but then you get like each of the different character stories, but you get their whole story and you start piecing together how the different characters are connected and things like that in a really interesting way to figure out who is the bank robber. I really loved every aspect of this novel because it has a lot of unique characters that you get to know really well, while at the same time having this really interesting mystery and it's structured in a very interesting way. It's definitely one of my favorites by Frederick Bachman. I think the only ones that top this are probably like Bear Town and Us Against You, which are some of his more like emotional ones. And I do think this one is really emotional also in certain ways, but it, it's also very cheerful in other ways as well. I enjoyed every second of this and Frederick Bachman continues to be one of my favorite authors. Next, I have to talk about Imaginary Friend by Stephen Schabotsky. So I definitely plan to put this on my most surprising books of the year list because it was just so surprising to me. Like I went into this not expecting very much, I didn't really know what this was about. I've only read one other book by this author and horror just generally is not one of my favorite genres, but this worked for me so, so well. I don't even know how I liked it so much, but it was really, really good. It's very, very slow burn. It's following a boy and his mother, which by the way, absolutely love their relationship. The mother-son relationship in here is absolutely fantastic. They're just like a little subtle things that happen along the way that happen to the boy who who has this imaginary friend who may or may not be real. This imaginary friend might actually be this being that is talking to him and making him do things, but it might also be just the plastic bag. And you're not really sure whether the boy is just or like actually seeing this other being and there's actually like things happening. It's so interesting in the way this happens. And then of course, there's also like a good bit of action, mostly towards the end. And it's a ginormous book, so it takes a while to get through, but it is just so worth it. I loved every second of this. It's also beautifully written. I feel like books like this, if it's beautifully written, I can just sit all day and read this book. And that's basically what I did with this book. Cause I think I finished it in like 48 hours or something ridiculous like that. And it's a ginormous book, like it's huge but I was just so engrossed in this book the entire time that I could not stop. I absolutely love this so, so much and would definitely recommend it. I do think this is not a book for everyone. Like if you like really good slow burn, atmospheric sort of horror novels, then you're probably gonna love this. But I know that type of book is not for everyone. It also has Christian themes in here. If you don't like that, or if you don't like Christian themes in horror novels, then you're probably not gonna like this very much. For me, it worked really well, and I really, really loved it. The next book that I wanna talk about is Parable of the Sower by Octavia E. Butler. So of course I have another Butler book on this list because I have to. Parable of the Sower really stood out to me. I honestly didn't expect to like this more than Lilith's Brood because this one is a near future dystopian. So think kind of along the same lines as 1984, The Handmaid's Tale, Fahrenheit 451, Brave New World, like those types of books, which I feel like I'm always like excited to read. And then I usually either don't like or just kind of enjoyed, but didn't like absolutely love those books. This one I absolutely love. Like I didn't expect to love this one as much as I did, but there was just so much about this that resonated with me in a way that I didn't expect. There is a few aspects of this that are kind of like weird and cultish because it's following the character named Lauren Alamina, who kind of creates her own religion, which is kind of cool. But at the same time, I don't love that aspect of it, but it really, really works. 
works in this book in a way that I didn't expect. I also really love the world building. I think the world building is what really sold me on this book. Like this book starts in a relatively safe place, even though it is still very much dystopian from what we currently have, though similar enough that you can kind of see how our society would turn into that. And then it gets darker and darker and darker. I don't know how Butler does it, but it was just so beautifully written. She has a way of just being so hard on her characters in a really realistic way that I absolutely enjoy. This book honestly was way more than I was expecting for it to be. I knew it was gonna be good. It's her most popular book, but I didn't expect for it to be as good as it was. Not the type of book that I typically love, but I did absolutely love this and I ended up giving this one five stars, of course. And my favorite book of the year, at least non-fantasy wise, I was really not expecting this to be my favorite book of the year, but it just kind of happened. And I feel like it's somewhat of an unpopular opinion because I feel like not as many people like this book as much as I did, but I absolutely loved it. And that's One by One by Ruth Ware. I think when I picked this book up, I was just in the perfect mood for it too. Ruth Ware is a psychological thriller author and One by One is following a group of characters in a chalet in the French Alps. So it's following two characters who work at the chalet as well as a group of employees for a corporate retreat. And near the very beginning of this, one of the business owners gets into kind of an accident and doesn't come back from skiing. And because of course they're high in the mountains, there is a bit of an avalanche and they lose touch with the outside world and then start disappearing one by one. This was absolutely fantastic because we get to follow these characters and there's so many secrets and intriguing things going on with the different characters and like their relationships and connections with to each other. And of course there's this murder mystery that's happening and Ruth Ware's writing is just so beautiful and atmospheric. This worked for me so well. I loved every second of this. Also, I listened to this partially on audio. The audiobook narrator, Imogen Church, paired with Ruth Ware's just chilling atmosphere. It's just so perfectly done. I loved every second of it. And I feel like this book just had it all. Like it had fantastic characters that I got attached to. It had a fantastic plot that was really great. I loved seeing the plot play out while at the same time set in this really atmospheric world. Like just literally every aspect aspect of this book worked for me so well. I enjoyed it so much and it's definitely one of my favorite reading experiences that I had all year long. So that's all I have for you guys. If you've read any of these books, let me know down in the comments because I'd love to discuss with you guys. I post videos on Sundays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, so consider subscribing. If you'd like to be notified as soon as I upload, you can click that little bell icon. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up to support my channel. All social media links are in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!